fear of the hospital to calm me down. Listen to that. I'm scared to go to the hospital because I say I got to calm myself down because I don't want to go over there and get me right. for real. And I, that's what calmed me down. And we shouldn't be living day to day life afraid of normal things. Exactly. That, that should not be part of our everyday conversation. I mean, exactly, man. Like, I mean, I've seen somebody get hit up literally in front of me uh, in a in a spot with Poe, with Prince Poe one night. And um, I never talked about it, you know, but it, it traumatized me to see a man lose his life in front of my face. And then I tripped over, the, you know, me and Prince tripped over this guy. Wow. You know, brains, blood, everything. You know what I'm saying? Literally tripped over him and then, I never talked about that, but um, it it just it, it that was never normal to me. I never told my moms and them until later on about that. And you know, even though I told her maybe twenty years later, she she felt crazy. Like, damn, like why y'all why you didn't tell me about that? And it was like what I was going to tell you. Like it wasn't me getting shot, you know. But I seen somebody lose their life. Like, right. And um, she was just like, yeah, but to hold things in like that as a, as a youth, yeah. you know, I was probably 19, 20 years old, you know, that's not normal to see somebody die unnatural. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's not a natural death, man. Getting your head blown off or stabbed or, you know, you might... Uh, uh, for universe forbid, you know, you you on the train and you slip, but you, at least nobody killed you. You know what right. I mean? Like right. to kill someone unnecessarily is just not natural. And, and you know what's crazy? You know, so same age you were, my man trying again. Who well, I was just telling you about with the turntables. We used to we used to go throughout the city going to parties, and he got injured. Because somebody felt like they, they couldn't fight us. They pulled out a gun. And, you know, he's been injured. He's injured to this day due to that. And I drive through the area where he got shot at all the time. And I cannot drive through that area without thinking about my friend. We lost a friend that night. And, and my man got permanently injured with that shit. Cool guy, man. Like I said, I didn't have to tell you this at the time. He would let me come spend in his house for an hour. So... It's just, like you said, it's so many things that tie into this. When I hear certain songs, I think about going to his crib. When I think about his crib, I think about him. When I think about him, mm -hmm. I think about that night. I can see that night. That night plays, I drive Uber too. So I drive through that neighborhood all the time. I'm driving through that neighborhood. Right. I think about my man, just not as my friend, as the night he got hurt at least five times a week. At a minimum. Right. At a yeah. point, I drove through that a day and mm -hmm. thought about it. And it's like, man. Yeah. And he a good, I mean, this ain't no. Music. He, you know. He ain't no. Yeah. Music can always, music. Yeah. Right. Music can also trigger a memory. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember where certain things was at. Uh, I remember certain things or what I was doing when a particular record that yes. you know that I maybe haven't heard in a long time comes on, like I can remember the exact place, time where I was at, and um, you know that's what music does for us though. This is what um people don't understand, but you know the the some of the music just right now, man, I just don't listen to it. Like I know it's not good, but like I tell people, and like I said to you, it's, the, the game is still young, man. So hopefully. Things uh revert back to what we was doing in the sense of you know positivity, but you know I won't hold my breath for that. Yeah. It's about money and 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 making money off of us now. So, and they making billions off of us. Yeah, uh, it's billions. Right. Sponsors yeah. is making billions off of us, man. Yeah, and you know that's why I fight so hard for the culture. You know, that's why it offends me when they say this guy's better because he sold this much music and he not even, you know, he's just making music to make money. 
he ain't making music to help the community. Because, dude, that police be watching me. Now, I have to get jumped by the police. That registered with me, man. That registered with me. It's like, man, you know, and, and like you say, it, it, that music, people are, well, we don't have that music no more. We do have that music. That's why I want to come up with a way. Because me and my man, DJ Knox, and my man, number one chief rocker, Jersey Byrne, we own this network. We co we operate through Spreaker, but we own the network. And I'm like, man, I got to come up with a way to like reach out to you and other MCs and create a show so we can highlight y'all music and play y'all music so people can continue to shop with y'all and people continue to get spin mm-hmm. because I'm dedicated to the coach. I'm dedicated to coach, hip hop culture, and I'm dedicated to the black community. And one way or another, exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna die trying to fix both of them because if we and, and, the, and the crazy part is if we fix one the other one will be fixed automatically, automatically. Yeah. and that's the that's, yeah. you know because so you know like i said man i really respect it that's the key one. man the, that's the key is um uh laying better foundation for the next person or the next generation and you said it like, yo, we supposed to not have the mentality of just dying, but that mentality of I'll die for my people, like from, for for betterment of my people to move forward and advance. Yeah, I'll die without without question. Yeah, like, like without question. Cartoons. Give me a cigarette, let me smoke it, and pow, it's over. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, so, like it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. One, but we got to stop. We got to stop rocking each other to sleep, though, too, man. Like, Ooh. but we have to figure. We have to figure this out, man. Like, we have to do something, man. You know, like I said, we got OGs all over the country, man. Like, they got to do something, man. Like, we got to do. We the elders now. Mm-hmm. We pushing 50 and 49 and we the elders now, you know. Um, yeah. our, our OGs is still alive, but you know they're older. Yeah, and and you know what? And you know how I know we moving in the right direction. Even with my show, is moving in the right direction. I had Guilty Simpson on two or three months ago, mm-hmm. and he said the exact. He said his mission in life is to fix the black family. You are saying, yeah, want to fix the black family, and that's my goal with this show, building the show. We got to build up the community and destroy the madness that's surrounding our community and destroying our community. So yeah, man, it's it's I know I'm doing the right thing. I know I'm saying the right thing. I know I'm pushing forward in the right direction. And and, and the more I link up with guys like you, guilty and others, and I'm gonna continue to reach out to as many people as possible. And and like I got a, a brother from my neighborhood, he feeding homeless. He he put now five, six hundred meals a week to home. I got a home right. girl. That's what's up. Her name is Loki. She listens to the show. She uh, uh part of the street organization. But I'm going to keep it real. She she used to be a Harlem Crip. She out her pocket feeding 1,200 people every two weeks out her pocket. She, she working two jobs and giving away her money. So we out here. We doing the work. And I got, that's why I want to highlight, you know, people, like one of my homies is like, well, what the MC got to do with what you trying to do? I was like, man, OC comes from nothing, just like we do. He's a success story. He, if you listen to his music, and the ir- irony is I play music in the background, Born to Live, it's, uh, the instrumental mm-hmm. Born to Live is playing right now that I'm talking to you. It just happened to be, it just happened to fall that way. But uh, I was like, we got to show people that, yeah, He's an entertainer. And then I was going to talk about your successes and your come up. I didn't know me and you was going to get on, on this uh, political thing, which is my show in general. But it shows that I am reaching out to the right people. You are, you were the right person. Like I told yeah. you, man, if you listen to the man music, he actually give a damn because people can't write. Like the song that's playing in the background, you can't hear, but the listeners can hear. You don't make a song born to live if you don't give a damn. And you made this song when you were 20 years old. So people don't change yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. You know. Man. Exactly, man. I, I, I'm not I'm not trying to kill. I'm not trying to make murder music. Like, right. that's not me. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't raised that way either, too. That's another thing about the black community. Like, people think it's, it's, it's you a 
sucker because you ain't in the streets or something like that. Like, I'm not, a, I'm, I ain't never been no gangbanger. I ain't never been in the streets to that degree. But, you know, I had two parents. I, I'm like, I grew up with both of my parents. You know, I had a decent uh, uh, upbringing. And um, ain't nothing embarrassing about that. I'm proud of that. Yes, man. I'm proud that my mom would have put her foot through my ass for doing the wrong thing. Now, I'm not going to be I'm not gonna be on air. My listeners know, I'm not going to pretend that I ain't doing anything wrong. But every time I got close to that line, I knew I had to answer to somebody. So I get close exactly. to my hand or I go into that gray area, but I never crossed over because of that. I'm proud to know, you know, my mom, God rest her soul. I'm glad that as, as much insane stuff that me and my crew did, I know I never crossed that line, and it, and 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 it's because of my mom, and you know what I'm saying. So yeah, man. And right. Both, well, both, I had I, two brothers that was jailbirds, man. So that taught me right off the bat. Two of my older brothers is jailbirds, and you know one of my brothers is doing life. So I got a brother. That that taught me off off the bat. Same page. My brother's on the same page. My older brother. Like, I got, look, look like this. My brother was in and out of the joint so much. Again, my man, he in the chat room. He listening. He's been knowing me since I was like 12 years old. I bet you he didn't even know I had a brother. That's how much my brother stayed in the chat room. <laughs> he is one right. of my closest and oldest friends. He probably don't even know I had a brother into this conversation. Right. No so, doubt. Yeah. So, yeah, man. It's just. We gotta make, we yeah. gotta make, like you said, we gotta make the nigga uncool and the black man the coolest dude in the world. Because at one point in our life, exactly. being dope was having a slick job, coming in with the slick ride and the slick clothes. You know, I remember, exactly. you know, remember you thought you was, you thought the dude on the block was the coolest dude in the world. If he could get out his nice ride and hit the button in his car, go boop, boop. You thought that was cool when you was a young guy. <laughs> Exactly. Like, oh wow, he getting off work. He wearing the shirt and tie, and now that dude is suck, and and he ain't never been. Yeah. Guy. Right, because people like yo, um, you know, we went from selling drugs to is dope. You know, this generation is dope addicts. I said, nah, y'all got it twisted. I said, they ain't never been cool to sell drugs. They ain't never been cool to hustle. Dudes hustled out of necessity. Right. And that still ain't make it cool, but what was cool about somebody selling drugs, even yeah. if they wasn't using it? Right, it, it ain't never been cool. Like you said, like Talib Kwame, he said, people, black people don't sell drugs because they like to see people smoke. Black people sell drugs because they broke. And if you gave people other yeah. options, they would take those options. Yeah, exactly. Don't tell me that. You show somebody what it is, that's what they're going to do. Exactly. If you give a person a limited access, a limited access to anything and they only got short, uh, a short rope, this is all they're going to know. So it ain't never been cool in the 80s, 70s, heroin, crack. None of that was never cool. Mm. What are y'all talking? You know what I'm saying? People be like, yeah, but these dudes using the product. It don't matter. When they when 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 the cats that was hustling was selling dope back in the day, they were selling to their people. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference with the young guys doing lean and pills and stuff today, and and and, and talking about it in their music? I'm like, it's the same thing as a guy saying I sold mad mad keys, and and I made all this money. Nah, it was none of that was cool. None of it. Period. None of it. And, and that's something I'm glad you said that because that's something that is never said, man. Yeah. Nobody says that it wasn't cool. It was the necessity. No, it. Yo, H. People said it who sold drugs. People just ain't right. listening to them or they ain't magnify it. Exactly. Correct. Nice correction. Thank you for that correction. Exactly. A lot of dudes said it. A lot of dudes talked about they sold drugs and they regretted it. Yeah. And some dudes never talked about it, you know, or some people just had reputations, but they never magnified it. You know what I'm saying? So, but, you know, when I hear people say certain things sometimes.